Hi, and welcome to this PowerShell quick tip. So this is kind of like a new series that I'm thinking about starting. Uh, these are just going to be some quick videos on some PowerShell tips on some uh, smaller topics that we've kind of seen in the tutorial videos, uh, but I never really went in depth with them. We just kind of used them. Uh, I didn't really explain too, too much what else you can do with them. So we're actually going to be starting with uh, environment variable. Uh, so environment variables in PowerShell uh, use the environment variables that are set in Windows. Now, there are tons of them in PowerShell. You can actually access them all right now just by doing a dollar sign env and then a colon. And then you're going to have all the different types of environment variables. Now, a common one that I actually use is computer name. Uh, so if I have uh, scripts running on a bunch of different servers, instead of writing the script out and for an email notification, if a script fails, instead of typing in the server name or the computer name all the time, I use this environment variable and this will actually output the computer name, which for my machine here, it is hype V 2016 L. So you can use this um, in all your scripts and it will always just dynamically bring in the computer name of the computer that is running the script. Now there are a bunch of other ones as well. Um, as you could probably see if you are doing this on your own machine at the same time, uh, like we have the home drive, the home path. Uh, there is also like the logon server that we used the number of processors. So if we look at that here, we can see that we have four processors. So maybe if you're doing something with like multi-threading um, and you can see how many processors the computer has to really determine how many concurrent threads that you have running. Um, so there are a bunch of different options, uh, but there is also the ability to create your own environment variables. And now when you create your own environment variables, you actually have to, like, two privacy type of settings. So you can create an environment variable for the entire machine or create an environment variable for just that current user. Uh, so we're actually going to take a look at both of those today. Um, so let's actually go ahead and let's just simply create a environment variable for the machine first. And then we're going to take a look at creating one for the user. Uh, so we've already seen how to call upon our environment variables. Now to make a environment variable, uh, now you might have seen the method of new item and then path and then you can put env here and then uh, colon and then backslash and then you can have like a test here or something and then the value and then you would put in the value now this is a completely acceptable method to create the environment variable the only thing though is this will only last the current session. It will not store it in memory um, and save it to Windows to be persistent. Uh, so what I mean by that is let's actually test this out here. So we're gonna create a um, environment variable called test and we're gonna make it have the value of testing. So if we actually do this here and let's do our env colon and test so we actually do see our environment variable and if we do run this we do get our output here which is called testing now the only thing that happens with that though is if we go ahead and we open up a powershell window here and we do once again we do dollar sign end and colon and we do test here we will see that nothing popped up, but if I do uh, computer name, we do get our computer name. So well, when I do test, it does not actually work. And that is because this does not actually save it to the persistent Windows environment variables. So in order to create an environment variable, well, you'll be able to use across multiple sessions on the computer. We do have to do it a slightly different way. So we're going to actually start by doing a pair of square brackets here and then we're going to do a system dot environment and then after the square brackets we're going to do a colon colon and we're going to do a set environment variable and then it's going to take three um, strings 
So inside it will take three strings. So the first string is going to be the variable name. So we're going to call that test here. And actually the only thing that I do have to do here, uh, actually just very quickly is I have to delete that environment variable that I created uh, just to reduce any type of interference that it might have. So let me just delete that real quick and let me just remove that. All right, so we're going to create an environment variable called the test. We are going to set it to the value of uh, testing one, two, three, four, just so you guys can actually see the difference here. And we are going to make that a machine environment variable. So if we go ahead and we run this, that creates our environment variable. So if we do end here and we will see that we should have our test here. It might not pop up in this environment. So as we can see, it doesn't really pop up just yet. So this one is a little bit different because you won't be able to really test it right away. But if we actually go into and open up another window here, create a new PowerShell window. So here we have another PowerShell window. And let's do n colon test and there we have our testing one two three four so our test variable so if we actually closed out of visual studio code and reopened it it would actually load in uh, the only thing is it does it loads in all those environment variables when the system loads uh, so it is a little bit limiting in that factor in this case um, but you can easily test it on another powershell window so that is quite good um, so let's go ahead and let's just create a few more. Uh, so let's just copy this out here uh, and let's let's do a few more. So let's create one that's called a uh, company, uh, company name, let's say. And let's uh, create one that's called a uh, company uh, tax ID. Maybe that's something that you would need to store on your machine or something. Uh, so the company name, we're going to put that as Jack Programmer. And the company tax ID, we are going to put that as 1001234, just to give it an arbitrary number here. So let's go ahead and let's load all of those in. So once again, if we actually come in here and we do end, then we're going to do our test. We're going to see that it still works. If we do our company name here, we're going to see that it doesn't load in. And that is once again, because I have not closed my PowerShell session and reopened it. So if we go ahead and close it and reopen another PowerShell window here, and now we do our dollar sign end and we do a uh, company name, we get jacked programmer. Let's do a uh, test and they aren't case sensitive. Uh, so if you do company name here, all lowercase, that works. And then our last one was company tax ID. So let's do company tax ID. And there is our variable. So this could be like very, very useful if you have a script that relies on certain, uh, certain things that are set and you're never really going to change them. You can easily set them as environment variables, especially if you're going to be using them in multiple scripts. Like let's say you're... And then uh, like you'll, you have a server uh, for running your scripts and you have on each script, you have the ability to send a notification to a specific email address to say that it failed or not. Instead of setting that email up in every script, uh, maybe you can set an environment variable um, that just is set for like end uh, notification email and you can always reference that and then this way, if you ever have to change it, you only have to change it in the environment variable. You don't have to change it in every script. So it definitely comes in handy in that purpose. And you can easily also delete environment variables. So let's go ahead and let's actually just delete the company tax ID because what I realized is the company tax ID shouldn't actually be a machine uh, environment variable. It should be more of a user environment variable. So all you need to do to actually delete the environment variable is actually by setting it to nothing uh, with the machine ID will actually remove that environment variable. So if we actually go ahead and set that up here and we go into once again 
our new PowerShell session here. And we do a dollar store end and we do company axe ID. We get nothing. We don't even get a blank. Uh, it just as if we entered nothing. Uh, but then we could still do company name and that worked great. So let's say we wanted to actually put in the company tax ID, but we want it to only be on this user. Now, right now I am running this as, so if we do uh, the, who am I here? Let me actually just shrink this a little bit because um, it seems that it's a little bit um, big here. Give me one second. Let me just, Just uh, stretch this out here. Perfect. That should be good. All right. So if we do the who am I, uh, we will actually see that I am running as Jacked Administrator. So let's go ahead. Let's create our tax ID as a user uh, environment variable. So let's again, let's just run all of these just so they rerun and they are properly created. All right. So we have company tax ID as a user environment variable but we have company name and test as machine environment variable so what i'm going to do here is we're going to run powershell just open the file location here and what i'm going to do is i'm actually going to run this as a different user for right now and i'm going to run this as the user of test user 2. so once we have this here if i do the who am i we can see that we are running as jack user 2. So let's see what we can do here. So let's do a dollar star and test. We get our testing one, two, three, four, because it is a machine environment variable. If I do company name, once again, we get Jack programmer because it is a machine environment variable. But if I do company tax ID, we get nothing. Now, is this just because it's not set properly? So let's actually go ahead and let's open up another PowerShell session here. And if I do the who am I in this one, we will see that I am the administrator account. And if I do the dollar star n, um, and then we do company tax ID, we get our tax ID. So as we can see in two different windows, one, we ha actually have access to the company tax ID. The other one, we don't. And that is because I set the company tax ID to the user environment variable for the user administrator. So no other user actually has access to it. Now, you can store potentially some private information. Now, I would, I would still avoid using environment variables to probably set uh, some sensitive information. Uh, but maybe you can you can definitely set up like a, a secure string in there. Maybe don't put like the plain text password in there, um, but the secure string. Just be aware that if someone does manage to compromise the account that has access to that environment variable, they will be able to use that secure string uh, in their scripts. Uh, so that's pretty much it for environment variables. Uh, you guys now know how to set them, how to remove them and how to set up machine and user environment variables. Uh, so you guys can use those in your scripts. They definitely come in handy uh, depending on the situation. This would probably be more of a production work environment uh, benefit, uh, but you might be able to benefit on your personal computer as well, depending on how much, how many different things you've actually automated. So that's pretty much it for this video. But let me know if you guys like the idea of this quick tips series. These videos are always going to be under 20 minutes. I mean, a lot of my videos are under 20 minutes, uh, but they're really going to focus on a very small topic and just kind of expand on them. And they're going to be quick little tips uh, to make your PowerShell scripts a bit better. If you guys have any comments or questions, feel free to let me know down below in the comment section. If it's something specific, I'll answer you directly. If it's something that I think a lot of people could benefit from, I will be making a video on it. Please hit that like button and hit that subscribe button as well and hit that notification bell to be notified when the next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.